Now, over the years, GarageBand has evolved from a sort of fairly basic 8-track recorder that I used to have on my iPad 2 to something really rather more sophisticated. And that also uh, goes for the drum sounds and how you input them. It used to be just the acoustic drums, which were the pads that you hit, and also the smart drums, where you could drag things in to be loud or quiet, simple or complex. Easy. Now, in addition to the other fantastic drummer app here where you can just tell somebody roughly what you want, which is kind of as a producer what you'd want, what you'd really do in the studio anyway, there is also this, the beat sequencer, which will be familiar to those of us who are rich enough or old enough to afford this step editing drum machines of the 80s and 90s. Now, what we have here is a complete bar, beat one, two, three, and four, with your drum sounds going down here. Now, I'm going to actually pick a, an acoustic drum kit for this because I think it just makes it a bit more uh, sort of rhythmic sense. Now, at the moment, you're seeing a 32 bar, a 32 step editor, rather. And there's the second page. You can see your sort of uh, rough and, uh, and sort of fine viewpoints here. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the I button down here and I'm going to go reset pattern. Which basically will reset any, any well, if I do that for example, if I reset the pattern it will get rid of what I've just done. However, you may want a new pattern. So if I go 16 steps and I'm going to go a new pattern. which shows here. There we go. Now you can see the thing is in playback mode because the cursor is counting 16th notes all the way through. Now this is a good idea to have it running and the operate button down here will either set it into playback or stop mode. So. Okay, so I've got my basic thing in place. Note how I've just put notes in. There is no velocity sensitivity yet, but that's the second of these five menus here. If I now go to velocity, the squares here will change color slightly, or rather shading, uh, and you can see that there's a volume control on each drum sound. So for the hi-hats, I'd want maybe my uh, second, fourth, sixth, uh, I'll leave the open hi-hat for the moment. I'll just bring these down a little bit further. Now, if you click and hold, you get a much finer control because it sort of opens up a zoomed window. Now, I could get some really nice ghost notes on the uh, snare drum. So if I go back to step and put these in here, and then velocity, I'm going to take these two right down. Now, you wouldn't have a tom every time, so I'm just going to take that out. Now, you can also have the snare drums. You can do something called chants. Now, that's the fourth one along here. You can specify how much chance there is of these quiet snare drums that I've put in being played. So, and it, it'll shade the part of the proportion of the window, and you can see a little percentage figure above it. So let's set it to 75%. That means that every fourth time, on average, it won't sound. So that actually, for the convenience of this video, did it straight away. It didn't play that one, uh, and then it did and then it missed this one out and then played both. So you can get a nice variation in your uh, drum pattern without having to do lots of reprogramming. So you can, uh, you can do all sorts of things. We could put sort of quicker hi-hats in here and then go chants on those. Uh, let's have a look. 
see what happens now. So, rather bizarrely, that one hasn't come round yet, but that one's come through twice already, and it's only 16% chance. But that's the beauty of it. You can set something up which sounds a bit more human than just a step editor. Now, if we slide this over to the right, you can see that you can listen to one drum or mute one drum, uh, just like in the main window. So you could maybe start off with a kick drum missing. So it's a good way of feeling a, you know, an intro or a verse or a bridge section or something just by muting your drums. So we've got various sounds here. You can add more. If I just swipe down, ooh, I just swipe down here, there's a plus symbol which allows you to add another kit piece. So maybe I can add my crash symbol. Now, down the right hand side, there are some little icons which allow you to preview those sounds. Yeah quite like that. I'm going to have a crash symbol at the beginning of my loop. There we go. Well, there you go. There it is. So um, now I wouldn't want my crash symbol to be there every time. So you could even reduce the chance of that happening as well. Now, the third one along, note repeat, what that does is it allows you to um, just set that back here. I nope, didn't want to do that. You can get very lost in the, the button controls here. So I'll just um, uh, literally scroll to the top. And for some reason, it's not letting me do it. Um, OK. Now, note repeat basically says uh, if any of the drums are going to have little flams on. So if the snare drum, for example, has three notes, we get this. Now, it doesn't really, it's not very realistic. Maybe let's try two notes and see if that's any better. Now also, uh, the because of the, the speed of the loop, if it goes, get it, it's not very realistic at all. But if we have one of the ghost notes with three notes, it sounds a bit better. There you go, see? The main snare drum beats, the back beats, beats two and four, you don't really want to affect. You do the... So that one, not either. Uh, this one, maybe... <laughs> Now, you can have anything, I think, up to eight notes. That's very, very quick. So let's just take that down to two notes, maybe. No, again, that's not realistic. Once or twice is absolutely fine. Now we've got the loop here, the fifth one. Now this enables you to keep any proportion of one of the drum sounds for the entire loop. So if I, say, wanted that dit 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 hi-hats for the entire thing, I would just grab my end uh, of the, the loop and now you can see that this one loops while the rest of it carries on. And the chances are also kept. So this one, for example, had a lesser chance of appearing. So perhaps you'd want to increase that chance, perhaps if you were just having a, a very short loop. So you're already getting more variations out of actually slightly less, bizarrely. Now, We've also got some uh, kits here um, where you can actually randomize the, what you're getting. But you can undo all of these at any time 
to return to what you had previously. Now here, we've also got some patterns that are preset. So you remember how I went to the left to find new pattern. You can get any of these and you can also edit them and save them as well. So really anything's possible with this. Now when I'm ready to go, all I do is press record and it will play this drum beat complete with any other alterations that I make in the meantime. Now, when you go back to your main window, you can see what you had before. You can see exactly what's happened, and you can even go in and edit this as before. The crash symbol, for my liking, was happening a little bit too often at the end, um, and also kind of in the wrong place. I've got eight bars. Well, I was about to record the eighth bar, but I don't really want the crash symbol there at all, so I just delete it and do the same with that and that. So there it is, there's another method of inputting your drum sounds. I think you'll agree, quite a nice method. Lots of interesting things can happen. And that's the good thing about GarageBand.